Welcome to the fourth video in a series of videos on configuring Kerberos authentication for Access Manager. In this fourth video, I'm going to be covering the optional configure options for the section on configuring your identity server. Um, these deal with Kerberos fallback mainly, um, but this first section is kind of cool. Um, it has some uses in environments. Say you have a workstation that's connected to the domain, but you do not want it using single sign-on. Well, you can exclude it from doing that using the curb.properties file. I'm going to show you just real quick how to do that. So there's two different options you can use in the curb.properties file. There is the kerberos.exclude and the kerberos.include. Um, let's go over here to WinSCP where I have the curb properties on my IDP server. By default, it comes up and it has a kerberos.exclude statement. Now, I'm going to put in the IP address of the workstation that I've been using throughout this video series that is connected to the domain. Let's save that. And let's go over to that workstation. Now, a cool tool here. Um, you can download and install the Windows 2003 resource kit, uh, which will give you this command shell that you can go to the resource kits and open up curb tray. This is a cool little utility that will show you that you have Kerberos tickets, your times, the flags, encryption types, all that fun stuff. So we know that we are connected to the domain and we have a valid Kerberos ticket. Now let's go into edge and hit the protected resource that is being protected by that Kerberos contract. There we go. Now, there we go. So instead of being single signed on, I'm directed to a login form on the identity server. So let's put in credentials and we get to our Kerberos page. So that's kind of how that works. Um, it can be a little confusing, uh, but Whatever IP addresses are listed in the kerberos.exclude list will be forced to authenticate using a form instead of using single sign-on. Or whatever fallback authentication class that you set up, which we'll go over next. Anything that is in the kerberos.include list will be allowed to do single sign-on, and anything that's not in the list will be forced to authenticate using whatever class you have specified. In the curb properties, you can only use one or the other. You can't use both. So either the curbros.exclude or curbros.include. So let's go and talk about our fallback authentication class. So to do this, pretty simple. Let's show you how to do this. Um, oh, before I do that, in a previous video, I mentioned what happens uh, in NAM when you try to access a protected resource on a workstation that doesn't have a Kerberos ticket. Now, this workstation is the one that I'm recording on. It's not on the domain, so let me show you real quick what happens. So, like I said before in the previous video, it kind of sends you to this dead form. I mean, you can put whatever you want it, but there's no way to submit the form. Now, you can imagine this will generate some support calls to your help desk, right? So, we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our fallback off class. So to do that, we edit our identity server cluster and we go to local and methods. We're going to choose our Kerberos method. In the previous video, I mentioned briefly about this property section. This is where we're going to set this up. Now to do that, we're going to say new and we're going to put in fallback underscore auth class all uppercase. Now in the property value, this is where you put in the Java class. Um, now I'm going to snag from the documentation. This is the basic auth class Java class. Now, as you can see here in the docs, it says you can add the word basic if you'd like, or you can just use the full string. In this example, I'm just going to use the full string. So here we go, and let's click OK there. 
and then we're going to go through and update our configuration which will take a few moments here All right, and we're current. Okay, so now that we are up to date, and during the little pause break there, I went to my workstation over here and I logged out and logged in as a different user that is not on the domain. Um, to show that, I will open up Curb Tray and show here no Curb Rose tickets. So now we're going to hit that resource and I'll show you what it does. Oh, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> My goodness. Let's try that again. There we go. That's what we want. All right, so here we are, we get a basic pop-up box. So if I put in my credentials, boom, I get to my resource. So that gives you a basic pop-up. Now let's do this. Let's go back over here to our identity server. And we're gonna change the Java class type to a different class. I wanna do, a secure name password form. Um, so to do that, what we need is the class type. So we need to go over to classes and I'm going to go to the secure name password form and I'm going to copy this class path. And then we're going to return over back here to the method and we're going to modify the existing pair. Now let's get rid of this. Paste in our new class path. We're going to update that. And then once that becomes current, we will go back to our workstation and hit the resource. All right, so let's go over here and let's hit this resource again. All right, and this time it sends me to my form for authentication. Now, we can also specify a custom JSP page to use so that you, if you have a custom login page you want displayed instead, you can use that. Um, and we can demonstrate that quickly as well. Let's go back over to the method. And all we need to do is come in here and specify JSP and then I have a custom page called curb fallback.jsp. Throw that in there and update our configuration and then give it a test. All right, so ready to go. And one last demonstration here. Let's go to there. And there you go. It'll display my custom login page where I can put in my credentials and submit it. And it'll also let me in. So that's how a uh, brief overview of how to use the Kerberos fallback class. Uh, feel free to play around with it and customize it. And it's a useful, handy little thing to use. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, keep your eye out for other videos. Um, I'm going to make another one on using constrained delegation using 
the access gateway. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thank you.